Sarah. Quarter at 631. Um, do a roll call. I don't even need to do that. One, two, three, four. We have a quorum. Uh, let me just check off who's here. Jay, Holly, me, Jen. All right, well, we'll see if Carolyn comes on in a minute. Um, are there any other, we have the agenda beforehand. Are there any other items that anybody wants to add to this existing agenda? Um, I think we needed to talk about the report or whatnot for, for the year because we got an email. It was like that blanket email that went out to the groups saying that the town didn't get a report from our committee. Okay. Um, I'll, add that, I'll add that on the new business. How's that? Sweet. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. Hmm. All right. Um, first order of business will be to approve the minutes from last meeting. Everybody have a chance to look at those and I got a little verbose last meeting. I think there's <laughs> three pages of notes. That just means you're detail orientated and that's a good thing. It is a good thing. You've been doing a great job, Peter. Thanks. I make a motion that we accept the meetings, uh, uh, the minutes of the uh, February 22nd meeting as presented. I second. I second it. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Okay. Accepted. Um, well, let's pick up the um, agenda items. The first item on this list is uh, volunteer insert in the May tax bill. What's the status in terms of the town clerk's willingness um, to put it in there? So we got a response from Barbara after we posted our draft meeting minutes for last month and she sent an email out um, to, I think it was it to me and you, Peter, but basically saying that she wasn't going to um, be able to accommodate that because of the possibility of weight and flexibility and all of those things. Um, so I did let Carolyn know, and Carolyn responded to my text message saying she's going to uh, be on in a couple of minutes. Um, okay. So at this point, it doesn't look like we're going to be able to utilize town inserts for this purpose, um, which I think is unfortunate. I think she did suggest to see if we could piggyback onto if Sue Antonellis for the rec department was putting anything out, any mailers. Okay. Um, but I, yeah, so that's where we're at at this point. I did, I just forwarded it to Carolyn and I don't know what, if there was any conversation or anything in between, mm -hmm. but just to let Carolyn know what was going on. Cause she is the one who suggested that we, um, draft that. Right. Mm -hmm. it. Yeah. That's, I'm, I'm kind of disappointed because I think we've been led to believe that was the way to go. And so we've wasted time waiting for the appropriate time to get it in versus, um, you know, maybe even doing our own mailing with, you know, some small funds that we have. Um, and I know when I received my tax bill, there was no weight to it. A little one third sheet would have not changed the postage. No, it wouldn't have, but I guess apparently some individuals in the Good company, have you? I apologize, but apparently Luna sees something outside, so she's yeah. just deciding to bark. Um, it is squirrel time. Yeah, regardless of Luna's interaction at this point, um, basically, I guess the, the comment or the email was just basically saying that um, some people get multiple town tax bills or multiple things in their tax bill, multiple properties. So um, I don't know what the issue is, but you know, if we have to do that ourselves, um, I don't know if we have any funds because um, 
the website thing will be addressed later, but I think we only have around $260. So it all depends on if we, you know, purchase the website and for the full year versus monthly versus, you know, doing the mailing as well. So um, I know it would be really inexpensive to send a postcard to people versus mailing a, a you know, a, a first class postage mailing. Um, so we could always just take what is on there and maybe add a couple of, you know, other sentences to make it um, worthwhile doing a mailing. Yeah, because I mean, you know, you do a, a small postcard. What is it like a three by five or something? Mm -hmm. um, you know, and we just do it to like local resident. So that way we're not. But, but not, they have printing costs as well. Right. But I think if you stuff. incorporate it with, if you incorporate it with ever whatever entity does the printing, um, they can get a discounted bulk rate for, for, the, for a mailer. Um, mm -hmm. Do you know how many people were actually um, had in mind receiving this thing? I mean, what's, what's the population of taxpayers? Well, you've got over 4,000 people who live here but you're gonna hit every post address. And then you've also got to account for, we have children, you know, um, so we wouldn't be mailing them to the kids. Um, so I think there would just be a specific breakdown. Um, I'm not sure know. the exact amount. Yeah, I don't know the number of households because, you know, it could be a house that's got adult children under one roof where if it's just one per household, it would be a fair amount less. Yeah. Um, but obviously getting them shared with another department was the way to go because then, you know, we're not even incurring the cost of, of the mailer, but, um, yeah, and I, I, I just had a thought, have you thought about the Sunday at home from, with the kids from school and also does the water department send out their bills for the, for the town? They send them out separately, don't they? Yes, I just paid it. Yeah. <laughs> so, the, water I mean, bill, the water bill does come out separate, but everybody doesn't get a water bill. Right, but you, well. you, would get, you would get a good portion, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. And then uh, I was thinking of the elementary, sending notices home with the elementary school. Um, that'll definitely a bonus for the events going on, but we could probably recruit volunteers um, they're back in school in session right now, I think, um, full time, because I'm right across the tracks from the elementary school and I see the kids there, every, you know, almost every day during the week. Um, so we could potentially do that. What about um, if we can't do this, but we, well, we got the agenda, the town report. What about putting something on the end of the town, our piece in the town report? Last year, Holly and I had a booth set up, but we didn't get a lot of people. No, this was at the town meeting. He's saying about the insert into the report in the actual booklet. Oh, can we can in we do town. a quasi advertisement? Yeah, like, I don't see why we shouldn't be able to put that at the end of our section. Okay, because if we're we're putting it on our page that we're looking for people, um, and. I mean, that, that it, at least in my town where I live up in Vermont, I mean, they send a town report to every household. Well, it, it doesn't get oh, yeah. mailed here. <laughs> Only people who attend town meeting get it. Yeah. Well, yeah, you can, you can pick it up at the town hall, but we stopped mailing it about 15 years ago because it just was so expensive. Okay. Hi, Carolyn. Hey, Carolyn. Hi, Carolyn. Oh, hi, Carolyn. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, I was trying to sign up people for our clinic on Thursday. I'll, oh uh, I'll put you in for being present here. <laughs> Thank you. We, we've taken, uh, we did a roll call. We've gone through, we approved the minutes and now we're into our first agenda item. And, and basically it was just letting, you know, letting the board know or the group know that um, we didn't get approval from the town clerk to be able to insert that. So we're looking for different avenues and Rocky made a great suggestion about sending um, a flyer home with the kids uh, for the schools. 
So that could also, um, you know, if we could get approval um, from the school committee, is that who we would go through in order to get something um, released I there? Could just, you could just ask, yeah, well, you could ask Darius. Darius is the superintendent. And um, then he would just, I'm sure what he would say is ask the principals. And then you go to just go to Scott Dredge and um, uh, Tina, and, and they would be glad to do it. It's no big deal. The deal with the tax thing is that we didn't do it fast enough. And, you know, we could have put it on the back side of the other one. So, you know, the little insert that she did put in there. Had, but it wasn't, oh, I had the insert done. It just, we got that email saying she didn't want it. It wasn't approved. So, no, well, what it was is we, we have to take her insert and then just print, have it printed on the back of her and you know so it would have been double sided right and she already had hers done so you know to say it wasn't approved that's not true really i mean the select board wanted it done but she had already printed out her things and had it stuffed so it was too late um so you know the tax bills go out in the fall so um at some point usually they later lately they've been very late but so what we'll have to do is, you know, save that blurb and then send it to me, Jennifer, because you're good with the tickler. And I, you know, sometime at the end of the summer and I will take it to Barbara and I'll say, we want it on the back of the insert that goes into the tax bill. And then she'll print it yeah. with her, hers. And, you know, cause it, she gets four in a page. Mm -hmm. So we'll print it in the back of her four in the page. And so when she cuts it and inserts, says it inserted, ours will already be printed on the back of her in little insert. Okay. Okay. Because her email to us was basically that it, the weight was a concern and other things. So, well, that was um, for an additional whole additional thing, but we could have put it when you got your tax bill, there was a blank side and we could have had it printed on the blank side of her of her own insert. So there's no guarantee that there's a blank side, but I would say, just remind me, I'll go and, and approach her, how, what's she doing for a stuffer? And then this, we want this printed out on the back of her stuffer. So I think it will be fine. She just didn't want, you know, it, it was, it's, it is additional labor to stick another stuffer in and it is additional weight as another piece, but we can yeah. certainly put it in the end on her insert. So we're going to have, we'll, we'll, we'll insert this in the fall bill then. Yeah, just in our August meeting or the September meeting, just, just remind me and I will go walk it over there and make sure it happens, okay? Okay. I, I have to say, I'm really, really disappointed with this. I opened up my tax bill. I was all excited. We were going to have our insert in there. And I'm like, where is it? And we were going to do it for the fall. It was too late for the fall. We got it ready timely. And I'm sorry if they already had those things printed. I know. I just feel if we're going to be good partners here, we are working with a skeleton crew here and we're looking for volunteers and we've had no means to solicit volunteers other than announcements at meetings. And a lot of people don't pay attention to the meetings. And mm -hmm. so prior to you jumping on board, we were looking at other opportunities of maybe even doing a mailer out to all residents. Uh, because I do feel we've got to reach out to people. Um, I look at, you know, the fact that we're less than two years from some events and we need to start bouncing off to subcommittees and we don't have means to get it out. And I think individually, that's not our responsibility. It's a town responsibility. I'm not disagreeing with you, Holly. I was disappointed that uh, Barbara had her attitude, but. Well, I guess I have to say who calls the shots and if the select board needs to do some weight there, I, I guess we need to rely on you to do that. It's, it's, you know, it's something that's really necessary 
and waiting six months or maybe seven or eight because the bills go out late, it's not good enough. We need to do something before. I'm not disagreeing. What, what other, <clears throat> sorry, what other venues can you think of in terms of, I like the school idea. Uh, I mean, that's certainly, and the thing that's nice with that is that the parents of the kids, I would think are gonna be <laughs> more enthused about having something for the kids to go to and celebrate than a number of other people that live in here and it's sort of a bedroom but they spend their lives in Amherst or, you know, wherever. Um, well, I also think the schools are getting excited because of the curriculum. I mean, there seems to be some interest through the DIG group and, and having curriculum in the schools and talking about, um, you know, some of the interesting things that um, history, history from you, Peter, that, um, you know, are, is not in history books and is not well known. And I think that has gotten people excited. Well, one of the things that I was thinking about is if we do it through the school, maybe one of the things to do is add to the transmittal and say that we're looking for people. And one of the avenues to participate in the 350th is to develop student related kinds of activities and events. And they may be particularly focused on, on that area rather than something else that it, you know we might be currently considering. But if there's curriculum development going on, then they should know it and might be willing to contribute collecting materials for that curriculum or putting up displays that this, you know, for the students specifically or having student. I think one of the things we could really use is having student involvement in the 350th with creating things themselves. And that seems to me like something that the parents would, would really uh, step up to the plate and join with their kids in terms of creating something for the town and involving um, you know, young families particularly. So maybe the thing to do would be to, to use what you already made, you know, what Jennifer already made for us but to put in some letter of encouragement to the families to engage with their uh, kids in terms of developing materials for the 350th. Well, as we're talking right now, um, I'm just copying and putting it on Facebook while we're having our meeting. Um, I have to say, you know, I haven't been uh, posting a lot of stuff on Facebook because I've been busy with other things. Um, but, but that's not your ultimate responsibility. If we were looking for help from the town hall to get a mailer out, you know, that's, that, that's where you wouldn't have thought to put a posting out there. We thought we were going to touch all the residences. Yeah, so, and, but what do you, what do you think about that idea in terms of joint, I mean, with the, with the schools trying to, to tap into that, the younger family generation, as well as the kids? and see if they can do something together. Well, Peter, everything we do with students is going to reach the parents. Yes. I think you have to pull, reach out to the, like the history teachers at Frontier because you're less likely to get, you know, um, help from teenagers, but, um, you know, parents of teenagers. But, uh, you know, if you have it, if you reach out to the, to the history teachers and they are, um, pulling in the kids. I mean, I think you can backdoor for there for Frontier, but um, then I also would just, you know, maybe again with the dig group and some of the teachers at the elementary school, rather than try to, um, uh, rather than try to um, figure out who, who we're gonna do, um, you know, what relate, have just rely on parents. I'm sorry, my phone's ringing. Yeah, we get it. It'll stop eventually. <laughs> it's just people are trying to sign up. Sorry. Um, 
Well, I could, if, if, if I'm, I hope to be down, I'll, I'll definitely be down before school's over. I mean, maybe I can uh, set up a meeting with the social studies teachers at Frontier. I, I think that would be the, 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 the teachers actually generate the interest really. And then you can pull in the parents um, and, and, and attract the kids or attract the kids and then the parents that way. I, I, I don't think you're gonna get a lot of traction unless you don't get, if you don't get the teachers first because they ha you have to be able to do something in the schools. And you know even though we, the, the MCAS were canceled last year, they are having modified MCAS this year and um, you know this spring. And so the teacher's times are, they have so few, you know, they have so less flexibility because of these MCAS over the years. So we've got to figure out how we can work in something with the teachers and then, and then go to the kids, I think, and the parents. Um, can, can, at least that's my impression. Because I, I try to get a pollinator. I have pollinator curriculum for... Um, to work with the, uh, the high school and they had a really hard time fitting it in until we had the pandemic because it's the online curriculum through the conservation districts. And um, once they had to go online, they didn't have enough curriculum and so they ended up using it. But um, initially there was not, you know, it's all, it's pre-done, it's a national standard, it's been award-winning and, and they just didn't even have time for that even though they were interested. So I think, you know, you have to figure out how, how you're gonna work it in with the teachers. And then, um, but I, I think sending out a, a mailer to with through the kids saying, we're looking for, you know, we wanna do kid-friendly um, events. Would they want to volunteer? I think it's huge. That, that needs to be done, but doing- I think, I, I think if you can sell the students, they'll sell their parents on doing it. Yeah. Uh, can you give me a contact person at the at the high school that I can go through? I'll I'll, I'll email it to you. Um, okay. Right now. Um, yeah. Don't don't worry about it right now. But if you can send well, me a before I forget. Okay. Yeah. But if you send me a contact person, then I will try and yeah. set up a meeting with the social studies uh, teachers. They they've got to meet periodically for their own business. So I just go in and take. Five or ten minutes. Um, we'll see what we can work out. Okay. And I was hoping that uh, Jeremy Rogers was going to be back in, but he's he's retired. He he physically he's not well enough to go back to teaching. Uh, so that's unfortunate. He was one hell of a historian. Yeah, that's. And he, know, and he knows Deerfield history like the back of his hand, but. Um, I don't know whether I can, I've been, I've been reading through his book. I, I showed you copies of his book a while ago, but, um, what I'm, I'm inclined to do is to ask him if we can use part of his text in terms of developing these mini, um, units that we can post on the web in in terms of uh, you know developing a history of, of Deerfield because of many many of his chapters I mean things on the immigrants and the, you know it's just it's loaded with stuff and rather than recreating some of this text for each one I think if he's willing to do it, we can extract out of his book some of those texts, so part of the text, and develop uh, little vignettes uh, to talk about Deerfield's history. Well, Peter, I think that this would be a good source for a bullet points card or reference, reading reference, that just sidesteps all the text and all blah, blah, blah. And let's get some of the points in and maybe a few dates. And that can be built upon even by the kids. My suggestion is maybe the kids could look at 
what has been written and suggest what more could be put on these lists, starting small, and then what, what can we drop into it? Another paragraph, five or six more bullet points, because we don't have a, a reading audience much anymore. who are going to sit down and do an encyclopedic reading. I'm sorry about that. But <laughs> I run into that with <laughs> my own industrial history, you know. <laughs> I know I have to cut my papers in half so people will read them. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, all right. Well, I think we've, we've gone about as far as we can on this particular topic. Um, moving on to Facebook, uh, committee list and, and descriptions. Jen, I think that's yours. It was just basically uh, what we were going to uh, come up with, what people would do in a brief description of what the volunteer work would look like. And um, I posted about the volunteers as we were talking, what would be on that insert, uh, because we had initially said before, we're looking for our um, people to help with the 5K and family fun run, the kickoff gala, the planning and the parade. Um, those are, you know, the top three largest events that we have on the calendar for 2023. Well, end of 2022, but, um, you know, for that particular year. So um, we have a description kind of with the uh, templates I had sent out before. I think all of you have that email where we um, were planning, you know, what deadlines would be for what group comes next. So as people sign up for this, we can basically describe what they need to do by um, giving them the, that sheet. You know, the deadlines are this, this, and this. Um, I think the other piece too is to come up with, with and, and my apologies if I was supposed to create the whole entire job description, for each individual thing. I guess I thought it was more fluid depending on who volunteered, what we were looking for, um, you know, for that spe specificity. Um, but that is something I can get out to you before the next, uh, before the next meeting, if you want the details, because basically, you know, each of those subcommittees has the chair that we talked about for the three. Um, and, and I guess this is the other piece with the gate, with the gala, I do have the question, um, because it was brought to my attention or question during the Friends of Deerfield uh, meeting last month um, for planning the, the gala, it would be the volunteers from the steering committee, you know, doing the planning of the actual event, like the colors, the linens and that type of stuff and the decorating, but that the Friends of Deerfield thought that they would uh, basically do the connecting with um, Deerfield Academy to get the schedule, you know, to book the date, do the ticket stuff, because that is a fundraiser, which that was, you know, like the question um, with the town soliciting all of that wonderful stuff. So I well, guess. Um. What I, we decided we decided to do it December thirty first. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, that date was was talked about. It's just that I wanted to clarify. So this is me taking off my steering committee hat and putting on my friends of Deerfield hat and saying um, because we need a committee, obviously to organize you need a committee the steering committee needs that subcommittee to plan the entire event whereas the friends of deerfield uh because it's the fundraising piece to working out the cost details with deerfield academy working out the cost uh for the finalized for the tickets to ensure that there's coverage for what deerfield academy may or may not be you know donating to ensure that this event goes as the way, you know, that the steering committee wants it to go. So. I think that would help to, give, to, bring, to have a leg up on what are we anticipating about 
costs and, and, and you know, what, what the academy is willing to go to. But I, I mean, as far as the steering committee, we, we need people to work on this, it, join us and become that steering committee. I don't think this, this steering committee can, has the time to start steering every major event that we've got on the calendar. <laughs> All right. Um, what I can do is um, I'll talk to Trevor because Trevor and I trade off talking to Deerfield Academy. So I'll talk to Trevor and um, we'll see what we uh, want to do about approaching Deerfield. I mean, you know, when do we want to approach them? Um, probably this spring, I would think. Uh, so, which is in, you know, another month or two, we usually have quarterly meetings. So I will, um, see what Trevor wants to do on this. Well, and my, my question with the friends of Deerfield hat is, um, you know, I had Chris Harris reach out to talk with, sorry. Okay. Hopefully you can't hear her as bad. Um, I had Chris Harris reach out to, you know, to inquire as to what would be the appropriate way for. <laughs> That's okay. I'm sorry. So anyways, I had Chris Harris reach out to see what would be the appropriate um, determination through the select board and it didn't in his thought process or what he had brought back to the Friends of Deerfield fundraising piece was that it there wasn't a specific structure for your ask for that particular time. So that was that's kind of my confusion at this point as to, you know, we want to solidify this date. The steering committee, we we've talked about it. We've reserved, you know, this is our goal. We want to be able to go forward when the volunteers sign up to help. To, this is the date, this is what we're working with, and this is what we need to do. It's going to be this type of thing because you're going to have to book, you know, with the vaccination, you know, rolling out is as good as it is at this point. And hopefully this will, even if a booster is needed down the, down the line for anything or variations, you know, it looks like we'll be able to do in-person event for this, which is awesome. Um, we want to solidify this now because we, you know, DJs or bands book, all of those things book. And, you know, it's it's a year, year and a half away or a year and what, nine months, eight months away. So yeah. we want to solidify that. Yep. Well, the, then I'll talk to Trevor and we'll, we'll do it. We'll ask Deerfield to be participatory on this. Okay. Okay. So um, is it a, so then what I will ask then is I will have someone from Friends of Deerfield, more than likely it will be Chris Harris, probably reaching out to um, to you yep. next month if that's if that's okay with you. Yeah, absolutely. So um, that way there's no gap and we can yep. the Friends of Deerfield can move forward to to you know to start with the cost thing. So that way it guarantees the steering committee's kickoff. Or for the town's kickoff because the town is the one that benefits everything so right um, well yeah we'll just put it in we'll roll it into our meeting with them okay thank you thank you um so going back to the rest of the description of jobs um i guess i figured it was fluid because we had the calendar set up you know whereas we had the deadlines once we got subcommittees established so there would be the different um, deadlines of things that needed to be done. So if you would like me to go into further explanation as to what they should do or not do or, or how we expect things to be done for expectations, um, you know, for next month's meeting, I can, I can do that. But um, if you would like to individually, so we don't violate open meeting law, if you have a specificity that you would like included, just send it directly to me, not to everyone else, just to give me what your guidance would be to insert into that. So that way I can make sure that it's um, included. So don't send it to everyone on the committee, just send it directly to me with whatever 
you know, content you'd like to see added for those three um, large events that we have going at this point, because it, those are the three I feel will need the majority of support at this time versus um, the, some of the smaller events we have, which could we can solicit for later on this year. I mean, obviously we wanna have the volunteers in place and have everything established moving forward through the middle of 2022. So that way when 2023 kicks off, we're ready to go. We don't have any lag time. Um, and that's why, you know, we've all been planning. Um, but I can do that. I will, I will make a note of that to have that ready for next month's meeting. And my apologies if my expectation was um, was wrongly assumed for what was needed for today. I if thought I, you could divide uh, it up, actually. Could, could you repeat that, Pete? I, I thought we talked about this and we sort of divided. I I know I was out of the mix, so maybe I'm misspeaking, but I thought um, maybe you and Holly had kind of split it or something. You. I may be totally confused. I, I'm, I'm recalling exactly what you do, Pete, but I don't think we went as far as breaking it up. Okay. I think we talked about doing that and I think we ran out of steam last month and we didn't quite finish. Okay, so then so then so I'm okay and that I didn't drop the ball totally on this topic, yeah, I thought I did. I feel better. Yeah. <laughs> maybe, the, maybe the thing is this, if, if we've got Carolyn and Chris are going to eventually work out a way to go talk to Deerfield and see if maybe it's better to wait and see what they're willing to do before we develop a job description because if Deerfield says now nah, we're we're really not interested in it then we got a whole different picture of what that committee is going to need to be doing yes well, and no it's just, basically it would just be ascertaining um, a location would be the the Friends of Deerfield piece, if say Deerfield Academy comes back and says that they're not willing to work with us, that would be up to the Friends of Deerfield liaison working with the steering committee to determine the location that is an agreed upon location, obviously. But then Friends of Deerfield would just get the location, the cost and whatever. And the steering committee, the or the subcommittee for the for the gala would still just work on decorating and all of that stuff because, okay. um, and choosing the menu and those types of things, which are you know right. right. Because our backup, our backup yeah. location, if Deerfield says no, uh, my second choice would be Eagle Brook School because Eagle Brook School does, you know, has their president's dinner and, you know, does certain events and so they're not. Yeah, and their dining room is very nice. And so I feel like, again, if Deerfield said no, we could, or that they were not willing to do that, then we could, you know, or donate some of their services because you, obviously you need to make some money on this. Um, then Eagle Brook would do, be willing to do it, I'm sure. Yeah. And, and I know in um, Hatfields, um, I think it was Hatfields, they did theirs down at the log cabin. I mean, they yes. just wanted it to be a fundraiser and a gala event, and they didn't hold it in their town. So there's obviously oh. options if we have to go beyond, uh, but our choice would be obviously to stay in town if we could. Um, Jen, because I recall as Peter did that we were gonna share some of this, I'm gonna take a stab at the parade and then I'll just share that with you to Perfect. save you some steps and then Thank you can you. tweak it. Perfect. Well, that's, what, that's what it was. It was the different major events. That's how you split it up. It wasn't the, wasn't all for the gala. It was that you were, I think you, you. I remember you were gonna do the parade. I think Jen was gonna do the gala. Well, it doesn't matter. You got it worked out now. Yeah, I'll take the gala and the, um, the 5K. I've, I've actually helped coordinate that um, when I was an undergrad. We did that for okay. nonprofit um, with some pieces there. So I'm making note to, you'll send me Holly the parade stuff. Yep. Yeah, just give me a few days and I'll get something to you. No problem. Okay, uh, we done with that? 
Yes. Uh, um, I think so. Do you, Pete, why we're talking about the jobs? Um, well, no, you already have the summary for the historical pieces. Do you want to just talk about or um, um, I guess, no, that would be more calendar stuff. So yeah, get forget it. That was just a different thought about like, have you confirmed with Historic Deerfield or Deerfield Academy or PVMA, um, you know, about your topics and when you can do various things that won't conflict with their dates. But I'm assuming they haven't done their calendar yet, right? They haven't, and they, you know, I think we're looking at next year before we really know what they've got on their agenda. That the Barb and I will work with them to make sure that whatever they put on their agenda will somehow mesh with what we're trying to do. Okay. But I think the, the formalities of which speakers they're going to get from where and what the specific topic is going to be, I just don't think they're there yet. Okay. Um, I, I, would, I would say maybe by this fall, they're going to have to be thinking about it. But I will, I'll try and keep you posted on, on that particularly. Awesome. Thanks. Um. I just had um, one comment. Um, Rocky had called me before this meeting um, and because you touched on the Friends of Deerfield, um, he said he was, the thought crossed him because he was sitting there with his town of Ware coffee mug. There it is. <laughs> um, and he said, um, has your committee thought about something? And I said, well, there is such a group called the Friends of Deerfield who are developing some of the memorabilia items and without it crisscrossing your committees can you just talk just a tad about some of the considerations there sure um so this is me putting on my uh i am actually the president of friends of deerfield um which was created originally as the subcommittee for the steering committee which was doing the fundraising um but lo and behold ethics and state guidelines and all of that. So we've created a nonprofit. Um, our website will hopefully be going live at the end of this week, beginning of next week. I'm uh, designing that. <laughs> um, basically at this point, we've looked at a couple different options for um, memorabilia to sell. And we looked at, um, I was Pacific printing on Damon Road. We looked at Sunrays printing in Hadley. Um, we've also looked at, you know, like an online option of Cafe Press. Um, but your mug looked interesting, Rocky. So, uh, so it's the town seal with the anniversary. Okay, I see. Thank you. Um, and they, did, they, they did it on both sides, but you could save money by just doing it in that one. So, so what, what, um, so, if you look at, I assume you're on Facebook, Rocky? Uh, yes, so, it's, it'll be on the Kathy and Rocky Foley. Oh, okay, I've seen it. Um, so uh, I I post or on the Deerfield 350th at the top, uh, Jack Cavaco designed that logo. So what is going to happen at this point is that logo is going to be utilized. Um, and I don't know if, the steering committee has spoken about whether or not they want to add the town seal, you know, to anything that's used for the 350th. Um, but basically that logo was the approved logo. So it would be moved forward that any t-shirts, mugs, um, Pilsner glasses, um, mm -hmm. challenge coins and items such as that would be utilized or created and that's, be that's linked kind of to sell on the on the page as the fundraiser. That's, that's specifically where I was headed is just the type of items that okay. we maybe have bantered about. Yep, and- I've had this for 30, to... 37 years. Awesome, <laughs> that, that's a really good lasting mug. A I long wonder. life for a cup. <laughs> we, we, we had four of them, we're down the three. Right. <laughs> um, but as we move down um, the list, Pete, can we jump ahead to the town common tree removal thing? Because I can, sure. that's kind of connected to this. Is that okay? Yep. So 
after our meeting last month, um, we I had emailed uh, Kevin, who you know, who's in charge of the DPW, about the trees that are coming down around Town Hall. The trees are actually, um, from what Kevin described to me, along the. Uh, now this is me putting my steering committee hat back on. The, the trees that are coming along the left side of town hall and around. So there's going to be a lot of wood to utilize, um, assuming the trees aren't rotted internally. Obviously, you never know what you're going to get when you take a tree down. Um, with that being said, um, Kevin was, was on our street here uh, doing sewer work and um, we got to chatting about the trees to see the volume of wood that would be available. And one of the things that he mentioned to me and he sent me an email with the information today um, was Thayer Street Associates, I believe has a CNC laugh capability where they could possibly um, come up with a print. Like if we designed something to say, you know, whether it be the actual logo that's already designed or we come up with something a little more ornate to have the laugh design, we could take the wood through there. He could mill it, but I guess um, it could be created into being a trivet or being a decorative piece on the wall, but it would be from the wood from the trees. So whether or not he could design the challenge coins that we've talked about before, um, or you know, a trivet or something decorative. Because a trivet can be used not just underneath a pan, you'd get the decorative ones that can be hung on a wall. Um, so, but it would be from a tree in Deerfield. So that was something I just wanted to update, you know, all of you with and to see if if that is an idea that you wanted to move forward and have the friends of Deerfield reach out to Thayer Street Associates to see what the cost and everything else would be for the fundraising piece of it, because we talked about, the steering committee talked about having, you know, um, something like that happen. And the other piece or the other topics about the wood, you know, is there enough wood where we could make a gazebo or, you know, something a little more ornate to, to have right outside of town hall or potentially in the new park if it, you know, if it moves forward with everything, um, you know, but I believe Kevin uh, said that they probably would not be taking down the trees until at least the new fiscal year in July because of um, budgeting. Um, so I don't know what your thoughts are on that. So I just wanted to bring it up since we were talking about, fun, you know, those types of items. We do need, well, we, knew, we need to have that organized because once the trees come down, you have to figure out what to do with them right away. So getting that organized now makes a, a, a whole bunch of sense. Otherwise, you know, the trees will come down and, and, and they'll be taken away. So what, um, as the steering committee, what are your thoughts on the, the doing this, a design and, you know, having some ornate, you know, as the trees are sliced or whatnot, having it, something created to be embossed in them, you know, with the woodworking. I think it's a great idea. Um, would Thayer Street come up with a design that we would then review? I do not know. I got, you know, I just got the contact information from Kevin because uh, I wanted to make sure that I had that for the meeting tonight. And um, I'm, I think a lot of a lot of places would have you, you know, allow us to design it or whomever, you know, so we could collaborate um, to see what we want to come up with. Sunderland had um, wooden buttons mm -hmm. with the butterball tree on it, and then they had a, you know, the the pin, you know, you just stick through your lapel kind of thing, and that was really good. I mean, I I mean, I thought that was excellent. They were giving them out to everybody that participated in the parade and I mean they were not expensive but I could see us doing something that was more expensive like a trivet that people would want to buy to put on the wall or but it, it needs to be I don't know if the town seal is a, attractive enough but it has to be something that symbolizes Deerfield just like their butterball tree you know 
community for 300 years or whatever, whatever they did under the thing. It was very, it was very pretty mm-hmm. and it was, you know, very inexpensive. Um, and it was, so it's a nice kind of little thing. I'd like okay. to back up on what Caroline said a few minutes ago. If uh, the tree comes down right away, okay, they've got to find a place to store it because uh, they're not going to make any of this stuff out of green wood. They've got to let this wood sit for, you know, uh, until it dries, you know, so it's got to be sitting for like a year. Otherwise, whatever they make is just going to crack and fall apart. Uh, so that's something that we have to think of is where you're going to store all this wood, you know, until they're able to work with it. I know Kevin mentioned it, you know, about finding a location, but I know Pete mentioned um, store I volunteered his yard to store the trees. Okay. So I mean, it's just down the street. It just and I got a I got a big backyard, so if he wants to move it into the backyard, he can just put it out there and it can season season for a year. Oh, okay. I just thought I'd bring that up because yep. you know, well, no, that's a it's a good point, and um, I you know I I don't see any reason why you can't use part of my yard to do it in. I mean that's that's really nice, Pete. Well, I think um, at this point it would be contacting. Thayer Street Associates to see yeah. what um, if we could create the design, what the cost would be, um, and you know to move forward from there. And then you know chatting with Kevin about storage, and you know being in constant communication as to when the trees come down, where they'll be, and go from there. Um, because obviously. You know, we got a huge response, um, you know, with the bricks as an idea, but we're, you know, at, that's on hold and at this point because there's no definitive place to really put them, at, you know, to start selling that or advertising that. Um, but if we also had enough um, lumber left over, we had talked about putting, creating a really nice, sign you know be lacquered and what not to weather the elements too um whether that could be in the common south deerfield or you know make one for both locations both both down you know areas um just for the anniversary but let's see how much wood is actually viable when we get to that point yeah, well that, that's, <laughs> the, that's the thing you know how much wood do you really have yeah. <laughs> I mean, I can, I can think of one thing is that uh, I, I have one downstairs. I have a cribbage board, mm-hmm. but it's a table. You nice. know, the thing is three feet long and about 10 inches wide, and it's got four legs on it. And it's got a draw on one end of the, where the pegs go. But if you had the cribbage board laid out in the middle and various symbols, Deerfield, whatever, around it, you can make a pretty fancy table and given the price of wood, like the, I, the the price of lumber today has gone up. It's almost it's about seventy percent more than it was a year ago. Because COVID, cre- a lot of people started projects at home because they had the time right. and the demand just went right. through the roof. So you know it may eventually go down, but given the price of wood today, it's tough to pass it up and not find some use for it but if you give it to a company that uses wood to manufacture something and that's free to them then it should reduce the cost eventually to whatever we get as a product out of it yeah um so i guess at this point i'll just i'll give them a call just an inquire about that and um yeah, or see if they have any other ideas about ways to. Yeah. If if you talk to people that do, what kind of wood is it? You remember? Maple. You know what kind of tree? It's not pines. It's, it's no, a, no. It's um, uh, it's oak, and I think it's maple. Hmm. Nice. Uh, so so they're both good hardwoods. It's really mm-hmm. yeah. It's at least one oak, but I believe the other one is maple. I'm not sure. 
Okay. So um, we'll have some info back for the next month's meeting then. If, if, do we have to vote on a, allowing me to contact them? Sure. No. We don't have to vote. We're not voting on any action. It's just a contact, right? Yeah, it's just a contact. Well, nobody's got an argument, so we'll just say you, you're going to do it. Okay. I'll what, have what's, it. The, what's the name of the company? I believe Bear it's Street. Bear Street Associates. Bear yeah. Street. Yep, they're behind the Polish club on the they back, that side street there. Yeah, they back up to Oxford Pickle. Yep. You're dating I mean, yourself, Carolyn. I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I used to work there when it was called Jewett's Pickle, so that's... <laughs> <laughs> and then what did it end up with, Cane? Canes. Yes. Yeah, yeah okay, it ended up with Canes. But it was, uh, I mean, that's a, that was an old concern. And I got pictures of that plant in the 1880s. Oh. 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 Um, so back to you, Pete. Uh, okay, what's the next item? Uh, we Post gotta office. go back to the cancellation stamp. Just a commemorative stamp. You did. You were gonna do that, Holly, or something? Yeah, I, I, I guess, um, I just needed some clarification because I know Kathy Melnick could talk to the old Deerfield uh, postmaster. Should we be going to old Deerfield for this versus South because it's the more historic element of town? Because I'll, I'll revisit this, but I just, I mean, we've got two post offices. I, yeah, and I think we should have both cancellations actually. Okay, then I'll, I'll figure out from both. I mean, I don't know how everyone feels, but I don't feel like it should be just Old Deerfield. The, uh, the question you might ask the postmaster, is it possible without too much hassle to get a double cancellation stamp on oh. Oh. an envelope? Or alternatively, one of the things that the usually these commemorative um, envelopes has on it is a cartouche or a, some kind of a an emblem or a, a scene or whatever. So it's a combination of a com commemorative letter. Yeah, and that's that's that seal though is on the letter, whereas the cancellation stamp is simply the cancellation. Yeah, so it can just stamp. So there's there's, there's stamp. two different kinds of things. Right. Um, and so one of the things you could do is have a, the picture on the envelope being multi different parts of town. I didn't say that right, but it, you know what I mean. Yep. different other kinds of things to incorporate both South Deerfield and Old Deerfield. And it wouldn't matter which post office canceled it. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. Okay. So, it, you, you know, you, you, you might ask him, and I think we can, the, the what's on the envelope and you'd have to, what you wind up doing is you print it, you print up the envelopes and then so that they get sold to the collectors so that they can get them canceled with whatever they want to put in them. But I, 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 I've got some over here. I'll, uh, well, I won't go dig them out now, but I'll, I'll see if I can bring a couple of what I'm talking about to the next meeting. If, if you could just send um, a copy of the images before I meet with them, that would be helpful. Yeah. I'll send you, I'll, I'll, I'll copy a couple of these onto a piece of paper and you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, thank you, Pete. Yep. Uh, let's see, where are we? Town oh, Common we've got, okay, Parade, Friends of Deerfield. Who was that the, is Holly's. So I pulled up the Sunderland documents and they were very, um, very careful in um, how they drafted everything for participation. And I will send this on for you all to look at. Um, 
but they have an actual parade participation agreement. Mm -hmm. um, and it's got some legalese in there. Um, and essentially, um, not holding the town um, for any anything that takes place. So that brings me back to the friends um, and wanting to use this as a potential uh, perk for some of the donors. If we are going to, and again, I've got to run this by select board with all of these documents because we're getting closer and closer to where we need to line up some of this stuff. Um, if we're gonna require every group who participates to sign this agreement as part of participation, um, then if we had someone offered a perk to participate because of being a certain level donor, I would presume we'd have to require them to sign off on this agreement as well. Yeah, that that's normal. That's a that's a liability release. Um, yeah, that's basically you know. So they're participating at their own will. That's normal. There's nothing wrong with asking people to sign that. I mean, okay. obviously, obviously you're going to go through your the proper channels and getting approval. Um, yeah. But yeah, that that's standard. So or, or Carolyn, you, can... you weren't in at the last Zoom that we had, and the the question came up about again a certain donor level to allow either someone to ride on a float or march with a group or, you know, have basically um, a banner holder with, you know, don't for the donors who wanted to participate so they could march in the parade as well. And I, I, I just don't know as far as the liability and the town, so, this is where we would need some help from town hall. Um, under a normal liability pro uh, policy, town events, and this would be a town event, would be covered. Okay. The only thing that is not co covered is negligence on purpose. And so, I mean, just being even stupid is still covered, but not <laughs> intentional <laughs> negligence. So, um, Intentionally getting run over. So you claim insurance? Yeah. <laughs> I, I can tell you that Sunderland, um, except for, I think, a rare exception where um, it was a personal vehicle that they had their own liability on the vehicle, they, they did not allow any children on any floats um, or on vehicles they had some really specific language there. And so again, I didn't know how- we could check with our, We would check with our insurer and see if the insurer had any limitations, but that would be um, a town choice. And maybe, you know, it was choice that, you know, it was a really hot day and, um, you know, they just didn't want, they didn't want um, kids you know, to be exposed from, you know, for heat or whatever. I mean, there's certainly yeah. all kinds of situations on that. And so, so at what point, Carolyn, would we check with the insurer as far as our liability? Well, what, what we do is um, we would, what we would do is you, if you had a question, we would just call our insurance uh, agents right now. Okay. We're with um, the Mass Municipal Association Insurance. Um, we move it every couple of years, or it goes out to bid every couple of years. And um, right now they're the best ones for us. So um, uh, we would just ask the question, whatever questions, we could put a list of questions together and get that answered, Holly. It's not a big okay. deal. All right, I'm gonna share those documents with, with you um, all and then, um, we can maybe see next time if we have specific questions and then we'll, we can get those answered by the I mean, insurance it's, company. It's, it's, it's really a choice uh, whether you have kids or not. Um, I mean, certainly if you have bands, you know, the, the high school band, you know, you, what's your definition of kids? You know, are you talking really young children or, you know, the elementary school might put together something. So 
I mean, we have to decide as a group what, what we want to limit. Well, you know, I can think of our Memorial Day where there's a bunch of kids who follow the end of the parade on their bikes. It's not the kind of parade that you want a lot of kids just wandering around on their bikes. So, you know, at, that's where I think we're going to have to figure out some definition of what we want to have. I Right. And I, you know, what traditionally happens after a Memorial Day parade is the kids, you know, end up at the senior center for, and they get free ice cream. Right. And so, you know, that's why you end up with kids on bikes at the end of the parade. And, and you know, it's relatively safe because the police still have the route shut down and stuff like that. But I 100% agree with you that if you have motorized vehicles and all these people with different floats and stuff like that, there's too much chaos. You certainly wouldn't want, and we don't, I mean, I don't know what the path is either. Um, I'm assuming the police will shut it down, but if you have a huge amount of audience viewing the parade, then you have a huge amount of people leaving the area in vehicles. And so you certainly wouldn't want kids roaming around on bikes, you know, yeah. for the most yeah. part. So, you know, I, I feel like it was probably a safety issue that was discussed and everyone agreed that it was not appropriate to have, you know, un, un uh, chaperoned children. Yeah. You know, yep. and I, I hear what you're saying with that. Um, and I feel as though like what Holly's saying isn't specific. Well, I feel like your rules or the information provided guidance um, in the documents wouldn't, you know, those, those kids don't sound like they've signed up with a group. It sounds like they're just, you know, they were, viewers and just yeah um, decided to tag along at the end of the parade I mean um with that being said we can always just make sure to send you know post out um I mean I guess if it's a larger parade I don't assume people are just gonna be at the end of a parade no um, I'm not suggesting that would happen with this parade I'm just suggesting that the Memorial Day Parade has a fair contingency of young children on bikes. And so to, to make it clear that this caliber of parade wouldn't be where we would want that. And it may be an announcement to, you know, through the schools even, you know, that for safety reasons, you know, we wouldn't want children to be around the parade route on their bikes. But we, we can address that. We, we don't have to belabor the point. Yeah, I mean, I, that would be something I'd work out with John Pachorek, our police yeah. chief, and yeah. have him, you know, ask how he wants, how would be the most effective way to get the message across. Okay, and, great. And one other comment about the parade. I mean, like, I, I hear what you're saying about the paperwork and everything. Um, you brought up the fact of the route. Uh, that's something we should probably plan ahead of time with the police department going oh, yeah. out sooner yeah. than later because we already have the date solidified so um mm -hmm. uh maybe that's something to uh to talk about for one of our upcoming meetings so that way it's booked ahead and we have everything all set with the police department just a thought mm -hmm. yeah i think one way to address the initial question about the tickets for riding on the on the floats yep I mean, you can certainly check with the, the, the town and about liability and, and the insurance. But one thing you could do is on the back of those tickets, indicate that acceptance of this ticket is you're waiving that uh, liability. Well, we would have them sign the, the liability of riding on the float. Well, so, so it, I really don't feel as though we need to have them riding on a float. It was just to have them march in the parade. It was just so like whether or not you pluck them in with other random, you know, at the end of certain things and of other um, participants or you create, cause like um, one of the things that the Friends of Deerfield spoke about at their last meeting was having a banner you know, the Friends of Deerfield banner, and then you could have the people who want to march with them march with march behind them. So yeah. that could be, that could alleviate 
Right. That I issue. Think a yeah. Right. Yeah. So that if way, you're not right about the liability. Then yeah, I don't think there's a problem with with having right. inviting people to march behind a banner. That, that is, seems to be. Is that okay? If if is that uh, is that something that the steering committee is okay with? Obviously, I cannot vote on that issue. So. Well, um, I don't have a, I don't have, we could take a vote, but I don't have a problem with it, particularly if maybe we should wait one meeting longer, have Carolyn check out the, the liability yeah. parameters with their insurance company. If it's clear and she can, she can ask the question, if you have people marching behind a banner to celebrate a particular thing, would they be covered? If that's covered. Well Anybody participating in the parade would be covered. And if we, and if the Friends of Deerfield needed to have liability insurance for their participation, they would be covered under that policy. Yeah, but I don't see why they would need an independent policy. They're part of the town event. No. So, well, they're not. So typically when someone marches in a parade or participates in something, there's usually, they have their own liability insurance as mm -hmm. well as the towns. Okay. I well, that's true right. if you're, you know, if you're driving a float or riding in a car or something, but if, if they're if just you're, walking, there wouldn't be just a need walking, for you. I mean, it, you have your homeowner's insurance that a lot of times covers liability. You know, if you say you trips, you know, you're walking next to somebody and you trip somebody accidentally, you know, they can sue you. And, and that's sort of covered under your, you know, potentially would be covered under your homeowner's insurance. Well, well, Sunderland also asked for certificate of insurance for all participating groups. Yeah, so then that would be covered under that. I don't, I don't foresee that being an issue because if we, if the Friends of Deerfield, you know, just had a sign and invited the people who donated funds who wanted to walk in the parade with them, they would be categorized mm -hmm. under, under that in walking behind a banner, not um, on a float or anything like that. Right. Right. That that sounds okay to me. Um, Carolyn, if you want, I'll try to get a hold of John Pachurik, um in the next couple of days, and then I could just circle back to you. Okay. Um, if there's any specific insurance questions. All right. Then I'll and I'll just then I'll just call um, our insurance person and you know make sure that there's no problems. Does that help, Jennifer? Yeah. Well, I think you know. Want to put it through? We should vote for vote on that. I mean, yeah. we can work out the legality pieces of the the insurance coverage as we progress. You know, that doesn't need to be decided today. But I think you know, having a, the steering committee vote on that would be um, be helpful. So that way, it could be an added perk to anybody who makes a donation. Okay. So I'd like to make a motion that we allow the Friends of Deerfield to offer a perk to a specific level of donor to participate in the parade with the appropriate um, legal documentation as required. Does that sound okay? Um. Just any, just say any required uh, waiver. Yeah, don't say legal because that okay. All that right. connotates some other kind of issues. Okay, um, so um, to allow the Friends of Deerfield to provide um, the perk of participation in the parade for specific level donors, um, providing any necessary waivers are signed. Yep. I'll second that. Send me a write it down, Holly, and, and send it to me. We, I'm, I'm <laughs> or tell me slowly. I don't write that fast. All right. Um, so I make a motion yeah. that we allow the Friends of Deerfield to provide the perk of participation in the parade to specific dollar level donors providing 
any necessary waivers are completed. Jennifer, you had a comment? I just had a thought, like, do I even, like if, if I just had it, people, if, if Friends of Deerfield went ahead and offered without asking that permission and just had them march as Friends of Deerfield participants, would you even need to vote on that? Good but I think it's good to have anyways. Well, because Friends of Deerfield would be participating in the parade. And they've got their own coverage, right? Yeah. There's insurance coverage. We're we're getting all of that, yeah. Um, I don't even see the need for it. I I would encourage them to do it. It's a good way if, to. If you're going to be able to fill out a participant form, yeah, and sign um the form, and then we would have all the waiver. Yep. Then but I'd like to. I was just going to say I would have them. I would have individuals sign a waiver again for us too. And if you want to include the town waiver, you know, for participants, I can totally have them do that. I just was saying, I just thought I was sitting here thinking about it as you're saying it out loud, because if the group just signs up as doing that, but I think, I think having the vote is good anyways, just so that way everything's on board and there's no like, so, so if the, if the waiver ends up coming from the Friends of Deerfield and, and you provide your insurance certificate, then we're covered regardless. Yeah, but okay. yeah, I think that's fine. Okay. But I, so I, you know, I guess, I guess I, I, while I'm happy that people will be offered to walk behind, you know, the Friends of Deerfield, I guess because we were, I do the both hat thing. I wanted to make sure it was above board and you know, there's no conflict and nope, everything's that's done appropriate. So, so, so yeah, we vote, vote on it. <laughs> well, maybe we should, uh, <laughs> how about a friendly amendment and just make this real short. <laughs> we, we would um, support the Friends of Deerfield's efforts to offer donor tickets uh, to march in the parade. I like that. Short, yeah. sweet, simple, but I can't vote on it. So you decide. Oh, that's, that's fine. We got enough. Uh, you okay with that, Holly? Um, I just don't know if we need to cover ourselves with the waiver being signed. Well, wouldn't um, the waiver be signed by the group as participatory people anyway? But the, uh, Carolyn, help? Huh. Well, <laughs> I, I don't think you need to do any, any have any waiver for um, as long as they just are walking, there's no vehicle. So there's no vehicles insurance involved. It's just people walking in the street. And I think, you know, that's going to be covered by the town insurance. So I'm not really worried about it one way or the other. You know, they're not, again, if someone did something on purpose that was really negligent, then that that's a different story, but just walking down the street, you know, that's pretty much going to be covered by our town insurance. Because it's and a town. It sounds town like town the Friends of Deerfield event. are also going to have their own insurance. Right. Yes. And Friends of Deerfield will have their own insurance. And then people individually either have personal in, um, injury insurance or, you know, I mean, their personal property insurance or homeowners insurance of some sort. So, mm -hmm. I mean, we have so many player yeah. that yeah. anything yeah. that somebody did accidentally i cannot imagine that would not the only thing i could ever foresee anybody accidentally doing is if a motorized vehicle ever you know hit somebody but other than that that's that's yeah, why they have their insurance and sign away their their insurance, yeah, exactly it's their insurance is at fault i mean right. they would yeah. be at fault Right. And, and we aren't at fault because we're just, you know, walking down the street, you know, so. So Carolyn, would you be comfortable if I withdraw my motion and oh, yeah. we yes. go with Peter's? Yes, absolutely. Okay, then I'm going to withdraw my motion, Peter. All right. I think it's important to talk about liability, but um, as long as people, you, the major, the major risks are your vehicles. So as long as there's someone has proof of vehicle insurance, um, okay. then, then we're really, that's all we really care about. Okay. 
So just to clarify before I make this, uh, I read this thing out that I've got here. Are we talking just about marching? Because we yes. can clarify that and just. Yes. So I would, I would say that the steering committee supports the Friends of Deerfield in offering donor tickets to individuals to march in the parade. I second that. All those in favor? And we're, I have to we're, abstain. We're good. You're, you're abstain. That's fine. Yep. Okay. It was kind of an end run, but we got there. That was good. <laughs> Yeah, it's good. Well, it's good to talk it out. I mean, you know, it's just so. Let's see. Um, I read my own oh, it's like, update on outreach to local businesses. Do I threw that on there because I was hoping I would have some responses from places like the Polish Club and yep. the Bonita. Um, I haven't had any responses. Um, I even reached out to Kathy Melnick to see if she still wants to help with farm stuff, but I haven't heard. So I think we just need to move that forward and I hope to have yeah. some answers. We'll just table the discussion then. We'll table it. Okay, new business, Farm Bureau. That's, somebody was gonna check with the Farm Bureau. Yeah, that might've than me. Hmm. Sorry. Yeah, it had to do with balloons, I think. Oh. Um, or, or no, it was agricultural. It was agricultural the, stuff. The bee thing. See, uh, it wasn't just the bees, but it was all different agricultural. Yeah. Okay. Uh, sorry. Uh, do you want to just table that? Yeah. Okay. Was that? Well, I know that, um, well, Bonita was part of the agricultural piece for the, the honey stuff. Yeah. So I don't know if I wrote anything else down. We just I've I found my section oh, here. The Farm Bureau for the county, could they help? Is there any big collection of oh people? a venue for um agricultural affairs and stuff. Right. I think that's well, what I we're talking about. And and I also have down on here note about can the Farm Bureau sponsor so I think it had to do with the agricultural, like we had an agricultural event yeah. um, to showcase what, you know, what farms and, and such were still here in the community because we've moved away from certain types of farming versus others um, that, that was in here. So we'll table that one. So what, I think we should determine what specifically we want to ask the Farm Bureau I'm not really sure if the Farm Bureau is a is your best resource. Um, I mean, I certainly would reach out to them, but um, I think the Franklin Land Trust has um, a really good uh, resource for history of agriculture, as, and as well as a historic deer field. Um, you know, has and PVMA, um, you know, has a really good long history with. Um, following agriculture in Deerfield. It, it wasn't so much the historical. I think it was more um, event wise. Oh, okay. Um, if, if I, 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 was, I was thinking, you know, when uh, Jennifer was talking about, you know, trends, you know, that what, what kind of farming, you know, like tobacco farming versus, um, you know, what people are doing nowadays. I yeah. think it was more like, what do they have as an outreach program and could we join forces? Okay. So yeah. Yeah. well, so basically, yeah. it would be to promote uh, the current, you know, farming um, going on within Deerfield now. You know, I mean, right. people are familiar with historically what have, what has been here, but um, it's gone. And correct me if I'm wrong. From our discussion last month, it was like talking about how we had gone from you know being more cattle to like more agricultural, you know, with greens and, and plants right. Right. versus, um, you know, and milk and, and certain yeah, things are still is, here, but. Um, um, dairy is really gone. Gone, gone so away. yeah. Um, I think, thing to, go ahead, go ahead Pete. Go ahead, Pete. Maybe Sorry. the thing to do is just ask the Farm Bureau, look, we're 
we're the 350 steering committee we're planning a whole bunch of events does the farm bureau see a way that it could contribute in a positive way to one or more events over that course of the year okay and also they already may have a network set up of you know how they get in touch with the various farms and that may help us also well, the massachusetts, yeah. massachusetts association of granges might also be very interested you know the mass grange. association of granges yeah well, the, grange. Mean, the, the grange has well usually in the in the um in the fall with the fall fairs the agricultural fairs the grange is usually a participant party <clears throat> but if you um if we're doing something here in town, there may be, if, we, if we've got a, a number of vendors or other groups that are just have part of that event, having agricultural things like petting baby sheep and goats or whatever by 4-H members that they bring to you know, to Deerfield, uh, even something like that could be a positive part of a, of a daily event. May I, may I interject? Um, I just want to say, like, I'm all for having large volume events like this. And my question is, where would we have one? Because we don't have anywhere to host this type of stuff. We don't have a large capacity. I mean, I know we talk about the potential of the park being, you know, being up and going or whatnot. But there's still some things that are probably going to occur that could prohibit, you know, the completion before the 2023 year, um, which I'm hoping not. But at the same time, where would we host this? Because we could totally do a large scale event to have, you know, people bring, um, you know, animals to showcase and, and um, the, the baby goats and, and, you know, the agricultural sampling of items and stuff, but where would we host this? Well, can't you do it next to the grammar school? Hey, I live on the other side of the grammar school. You could totally do it in my yard, but I got a small yard. It's only <laughs> no, I, mean, I live on the other side of the grammar school, the other side of the other side of you. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, <laughs> we, could, we could have them, you know, like, oh, you could have them do open houses, but you've got to get people to go. And I figure having a centralized location would be phenomenal for people to, to go to, but you've got to have the location. I mean, if we could, I, and I highly doubt that the high school would be wonderfully enjoying, you know, animals utilizing their fields in the back. I'm just going to say the, the upkeep on these fields is wicked. So they would not be too excited about animal pooping all over the place yeah. so, and it, and it's not just the animals i mean if you had it even at a farm <coughs> field which you know they do hold some events then it's the parking and if it happens to be a rainy day before you know then you have mud situation so um you know it may may be tough to do just a one big location versus maybe two or three key locations where people could be bop around town. Yeah. And then, you know, maybe that could become, you know, a fun thing. I know uh, Kathy Melnick at one point was talking about, you know, some kind of scavenger hunt or something too. So maybe that becomes an event where, you know, you can go from farm to farm and you get a little stamp or something that shows you visited and it becomes an event for kids. Well, you could actually get like a little pass book that they stamp. And then when they bring it back right. to a central location, um, like, oh, you just gave me a really good idea. Not just for that particular thing, but say we have one for the 350th and everyone who completes, you know, certain amount of stamps, like for participating at various events could get the pretty special lathe trivet or whatever we come up with as a prize at the end or, or coffee mug yes <laughs> or that lasts or 35 25 35 years <laughs> i'll smash i'll smash the ones i have so i'll need them so. <laughs> <laughs> but that's Girl. a great idea to get buy-in is to create a passbook 
where right. you participate and you get so many stamps for the year. I like that idea. And, and it also would generate the potential of exposure for businesses in town that part of that passbook is visiting a business. Adver yes. Advertising. Correct. Yes, I love that. Oh, that's a phenomenal idea, Holly. So. Hey, Carolyn, I've, I've talked to John Pachurik about this. Um, he was trying to find, find a way into the town lot behind my house. Do you know if he ever managed to do that or not? The, the town of Deerfield owns no. about a 40 acre parcel of agricultural field that doesn't abut on any street. It doesn't well, have I, good access. It does not have good access. We're talking about Brayburn, Holly. Yeah. Yep. Brayburn yep. lot. Um, yep. we don't we don't have access other than Brayburn Avenue, which is very limited. So yeah. I think for an event, you could use that space. Um, you wouldn't need more than, you know, drive in and drive out, but I don't know. I, the problem is Brayburn is so narrow that we ha would have a hard time getting emergency vehicles back there. So- All right, I'll give, you an, I'll give you another clue. I can, I can get you access through my yard. So if you have to, if it's walking only, well, that, that would be- We could do it from two different directions and you could park yeah. on Main Street. Well, that's true too. Then that, that would be not so bad. I was just saying is if we had a planned event, what we would do is park a, a fire truck and we would park an ambulance there mm -hmm. prior to the event so that you, you know, would already be there and that would eliminate the- you know, not having access. And I'm sure that play field has not been manured for quite some time. So um, if that may be where, you know, we could hold one of these outside events with. Actually, that's a very good idea, Peter. I'll, I'll look in and see what um, the restrictions are on that. Um, we could talk about that. Because um, obviously parking is an issue. Uh, mm -hmm. We but have, but but it's at least close enough proximity to the schools that people could walk from the school yeah. parking lots. Yes. Yep. The delivery lot will be done. Yes. <laughs> yeah, well, you could walk up from <laughs> town too. I mean, it just uh, you know, if we made it a walking event and not, you know, if you if you're parking anywhere within the village or at the school, it, it's walkable distance. I mean, totally. hell, the kids walk it every day from. Yeah, no. I mean, from the school parking lots to walk over there is not a big deal. No. Yeah. What about handicap? Yeah. You could do go karts or golf carts. Yeah, as long as you can have somebody do yep. that. Uh, That's true. That's good point. Golf carts yeah. to do small shuttling. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Well, anyway, it's something to think about. Uh, so, mm -hmm. what are we going to do with the, the Farm Bureau? You're just going to call the Farm Bureau and see what they're what they so, might do, Holly, and then we'll pick up the discussion later. Um, Jen's calling have, the Farm yeah, Bureau. I have that note to say, is there a way we can join forces to get word out because we'd like to host an event showcasing the local agriculture and farm um, currently, you know, in Deerfield? I think that's um, great. And that's also, um, is there a 4-H club in town? I don't know. I don't know if there's an active one right now. Yeah, I, you know, that's, it's something I'm noticing like a really big trend. Like there used to be a lot more activities going on in the community and there's really not a lot of the same things before. Like JT, my husband is a veteran and he looked at like the VFW and the American Legion. And, you know, I guess that there's no active units in town anymore. Um, One of the things that we could do for something like this though, is if, we might be able to reach out to Conway or uh, one of the hill towns that are more likely to have a 4-H and yeah, just have them come, come, come to town. I can um, research that. I don't have a problem with that, but we can ha definitely have a 4-H presence. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, be cool. Know, I mean, these kids are looking for ways to, you know, show their 
their animals and, and uh, get out and meet the public and, and have a place in the community. God knows they we shut the farm community off so, you know, in such a century that we've practically driven them out of anybody in agriculture out of the state. Yeah. Uh, I think any way we can encourage that act, that kind of activity is, is a positive step. No, I think it's great. I'm going to um, do that as well as, is there a list somewhere, Carolyn, that um, of like all the local farms that currently exist in the community? Um, yes. I'm not sure. Um, the recorder does one every year by local, mm -hmm. lists all the farms. But um, I, you know, there's a loose knit group of farm farmers that, you know, uh, have each other's products and stuff like that. So I would just contact Atlas Farm and, okay. and see, you know, um, try to get in their network. Yeah, no problem. I can do that. You know, and, and that's the kind of um, organization that might be willing to take on an event in that parcel of land we've just been talking about. Right. Didn't we talk about at one point asking them to host like a dinner or farm something like that? They, they do that themselves already. Um, uh, but I would reach out to CISA um, community. Yep. Um, and I'm familiar with who they are. Yeah. And, and see, you know, um, see what their network is because they have a list, you know, of all the farmers and stuff like that too. That's, that's a good suggestion. And yeah. Um, you know they would they would know how to connect you know what the connector is there um i don't know who would have youth groups other than i know there's a lot less 4-h just like there's a lot less girl scouts and boy scouts from my kids time and my own time mm -hmm. but um there are a few 4-h clubs that are still very active um i know there's um several horse groups like in berniston and and i think west county um, and then there's a couple of cow groups too. Jen, I can, um, I know some people over at UMass and 4-H, so I Good. will contact them and just see if they can tell me which communities have active 4-H. Yeah, no problem. It's, if it's, um, I know which group you're talking about at UMass, because we used to have them come out with the military um, kids and they would do stuff with them at the biggie uh -huh. and other places. So, yep. um, is, that's probably the largest place around that would have all that information would be. Yeah. In the I, I can do a quick call there. Great. I'll, I'll Thank let you. you know. Yeah. Usually right. it's, it's whatever, whoever the leaders are, that town is like the base, but it, you know, cause it's so less than it used to be. Yeah. Um, look, it's like countywide. You know, I mean, you have members from multiple towns. No, that's great. I appreciate it. That would be helpful. Thank you. Okay, moving on to website update. That is me. So after our last meeting, I emailed um, with Barbara Hancock, uh, you know, to ask about payments and et cetera. She explained the process to me. I reached out to Brenda, who is the town accountant, okay. who explained um, the process of, you know, making sure that Wix would have the tax-free info. Uh, so I have the certificate for the town's information for that. Um, and then, so that was like a couple couple days back and forth. And then I researched some stuff with Wix and then I followed up only this morning or today I emailed Casey to ask about that just because I've, I've had a couple other projects on my plate. Um, but in the meantime, Pete and I met with, um, so, so totally on that piece there of obtaining it, it's, I need to figure out how to get a person at Wix because it was like they only had an option for email. They didn't have a phone number. So I'm in process with that. I emailed Casey today to say, you know, how do we go about getting the warrant in front of the select board to approve the authorization of the purchase and to make, you know, I don't know how all that, those little pieces work. I'm learning. Um, 
So I feel like I'm becoming more educated on that. And I am grateful for all the wonderful information I'm getting. Um, so for next month's meeting, I will hopefully have it purchased and more info to give you on that piece. But okay. if you all saw, or this is going to the historic committee update, Pete and I had a meeting and I'll let him talk about the other pieces to it. Um, and I was invited into the Zoom meeting and basically explained what we were kind of looking for to have rotating information um, on the website for you know content, having um, resources. So we'll have bibliographies and citations and things like that to refer to on the website. Um, but the generalized content pieces, while I'm in the process of all of this, I've kind of been designing some content on the side. So that um, I can, once I have the site, I can forward it all to you like a to give your feedback on the website. Um, but I'm just kind of typing out in rough draft the content. Um, so, but Pete's got, those the the stu the grad students you know have a really great concept of everything so I'll let Pete talk about that but do you have any questions for me on the website piece um, it's just that it's it's a, a part I don't I'm not familiar with I'm learning how to ask for this information from the town how to get all of that red well, tape done it's, just, it, it's in the works yeah there you go. Well, that's good because it's a learning thing for anything we're going to do that will require reimbursement uh, for things. So I think it's a good learning thing for us to have Absolutely. as a basis moving forward. Yeah, it's yeah. it's an area I'm totally unfamiliar with. While I'm, I know the bureaucracy of using the state funding. Like when I worked for the for I was a sub I was a contractor for the Mass National Guard, and I can understand that and I would give it to a person to get approved or unapproved or how it worked but yeah this is more in depth so thank you for your patience with me <laughs> well it's it you know it takes time to work through this this stuff but I think once you yeah well the, the, the once you get piece, through the maze well the big piece on this is that um the funds, I believe it's around approximately $260 is what the donations were between the two that were received. Um, and we can access that before the fiscal year. So that's why we're able to do this ahead of time. But uh, when the fiscal year comes up is when I believe we'll have access to any additional funds prior to receiving donations raised by the Friends of Deerfield. Right, July 1st. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, well, the next thing up is the historic committee report. I, I was hoping to save a little bit of time. I actually sent this out to you. Yep. So you it's can really all have great. a copy of it. Yep. Um, so I won't spend a lot of detail, but I think we've got a group of four graduate students uh, who are working with Jen to uh, develop sort of the historic component of this website. And um, so they're looking at doing a number of several things for us. One of the things that I think the historic committee needs to do <clears throat> is to poll people in Deerfield about what they would like to know about the history of Deerfield. And that way we can tailor some of the events or some of the talks to meet current interests rather than trying to come up with programs on themselves. So they're going to develop a questionnaire that we can in fact send out and hopefully get back to help us tailor what we're going to present during that year. Actually, that's a good idea. That's a really good idea. Would, would this be something that we mail out, Pete? I think so. I think if we may, in fact, given the timing, we may want to mail it out with our uh, well, solicitation. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that, that's exactly where I was headed with that. So if we're going to do a mailing, we can cover all of our bases. 
Would would you want the mailing to be just a link to a survey, so like a survey that the students create that, online? That could, yeah, that could be possible, quite possible too. Be, because my thought with that is, is if we do a postcard, we still can include that subsection and it wouldn't be too large. So we could still get away with an inexpensive mailer. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah, Rocky. Personally, I would love to see like a walking tour uh, because I mean, you know, I hear where, you know, where the hotels were. I never knew about the pocketbook shop until like about two months ago, you know, so I, I find that very interesting, but I would like to know where they were, you know, and uh, have like a walking tour. There's one in the works. And Rocky, there is a booklet. Um, I'm on the Historic Commission and there's a booklet that was created for um, South Deerfield, or, um, you know, like the historic district that they're in the process of getting notified or noticed. I think that they get it through the state. Um, but there is a booklet that was done up by Mike, one of our uh, members, and it's got all of that stuff detailed out about all the houses that are there. So I believe there's some content um, that talks about the businesses in the center, but it may end where the churches are. I just have to double check, but I think we can, um, I think we might have copies we can send out or publish somewhere on the Thank town's you. website. Thanks. You're welcome, but that will be happening in yeah. 2023. We'll have one for the historic or old Deerfield as well as South Deerfield will have walking tours. I'll, I'll venture something that we've been talking about within the historic committee. And that is to elaborate on that booklet with actual signage in front of individual buildings that tells you something about their history and who lived there. And we're now in the process of expanding the walking tour right now runs between the senior center and Bloody Brook Monument. Okay. But there's a lot more that can be done. The earliest settlement in town was actually further north on North Main Street. So what we're in the process of doing is doing deed research and newspaper research to bring the walking tour all the way up to the dry bridge, uh, the railroad bridge <laughs> over North Main Street. Uh, and we're also looking at, at other areas. So I, I think um, I had talked to John uh, Nove on the Historical Commission about this. I sent him a copy of what I did for the churches. And, but we need to, I think we need to start planning to work together uh, more closely. I think we, the historical committee can support the historic commission uh, on some of these endeavors. But there's a lot of information to be gained. And we also uh, have purchased a, a pocketbook made in the pocketbook shop. But one of the things oh, you no, may not, one of the things you may not know is that there were actually six different pocketbook shops in town oh. owned by, and, the, and a lot of the work was done in individuals' homes mm. before wow. going into the shop. So they were doing piecemeal stuff. And the tanneries up the street, uh, if you go up the hill, hillside drive, the you know hillside road, if you take the corner and you go and, and immediately on your left hand side, there's a little pond there. That was the original, that was a tannery. And there were other tanneries in town. So it, it all begins to come together when you start pulling the pieces. And so that was the thing with the, the piece I just sent out. Rocky, if you'd like uh, a copy of some piece on a, a short piece on the churches on North Main Street. That you go by, just put me your email address and and I'll uh, I'll copy it down and send you a copy. But uh, oh, great, yeah. Um, the I guess where I was going, I started out writing a piece just for the Congregational Church because that was an issue 
uh, for me in, in terms of what the town's planning to do, but I incorporated the, the Monument Church, which turned into St. James Church after they sold it to the Catholic Church. And then they moved it, they rolled that down the street and they rolled the existing church down the street from north of the high school. So it became, and we don't even, the Methodist church is long gone, um, but there was a Methodist church where uh, the uh, car cleaning places downtown, where the old Housley's garage used to be. Like Josh's place. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And there was a huh. big Methodist church there. Wow. So anyway, have a look at what I sent you if you're, if you're interested. But uh, oh, yeah, I love it. So Thank you. Those are the kinds of things that I think we want to try and do during the 350th. Uh, and, um, you know, expand what can be done on that walking tour. I think the, the booklet's a good place to start. But we could, we could um, you know, expand that by having uh, a tape recording and you can just walk up the street and listen to stories about, you know, who lived here and what they were doing. And uh, I finally sorted it out that the original Bloody Brook Tavern uh, constructed in 1750 was originally up the road from me, but its last location was immediately across the street from my house, uh, <laughs> just beyond the parking lot for the parking for the pocketbook shop. And Risley's house is there now. Oh, okay. Uh, but it went from a one-story building built in 1750 to it got moved maybe twice, and then somebody came along and built a second story on the building. <laughs> that became the dance hall, just down the street from the Congregational Church that didn't allow dancing. Um, and then there was an addition on the back of it that was used for shops. And then in the 1930s, Bill Gass came along and tore it all apart and realized what was that the tavern was still there with all of its huge frame timbers and everything else. So they moved that up to Old Deerfield and that's the building behind the, the Indian house in Old Deerfield. So there's lots of those kinds of stories. And um, anyway, um, so I think the, back to the web page. I think the kids are, they're working on various projects right now and uh, sometime in uh, April, they're supposed to have a finished product uh, in terms of one of the elements that we can actually post on the web page. So, and then they're going to, uh, just so we don't lose, lose track of what they've done, they're going to write up some suggestions about how to move for how they might move forward in the future. Because if we have another class of students there, then we can pass that information on and we may get them to develop other elements of the web page as we move forward to the to 2023. Pete, so that's, that's, that's my report. Yeah. Pete, I think that if we had a little headliner saying uh, Deerfield is still rolling along <laughs> as a function, that we can point out that that little church had a had a mass a funeral and a wedding while being moved, according to what I got from you. Yep. That that should be broadcast all over the place. It's just goofy enough. It would bring attention and a lot of people would say, oh, that is just so cute. Yeah. It would, it would shift the, you know, I'm, I'm afraid that we're turning almost into a, a museum where we have big glass displays and little cards on the side and it's all very serious. And I think this is the most frivolous thing I've yet to hear about <laughs> this world. And that's, we, we can milk that. We can milk that for television, et cetera. Yeah. Oh, someone and, could make a float where you have the you know, yes. replica of the little church and you have all oh, these activities I, happening as it's moving. <laughs> that is great. <laughs> I, think I, I think I got the second uh, interesting thing. 
Uh, I live down the uh, South Main Street, the big old house down there. Inside my wall was a horse's skull. <gasps> wow. Ooh. That's oh, creepy. God. Yeah, I still have it. And there was a note inside of it. And when I undid it, it told me who owned the house. Uh, and uh, his, fa his family's name, three daughters and three sons. Wow. Oh, wow. Oh, horse is cool. I have to go home here, Peter, and tell you and show it to you. <laughs> yeah, I like to see it. Uh, the other thing is that we've got uh, some accounts of them actually bringing a, the bell up from Hartford by river. Oh, nice. And who was the cabin, and the, you know, who was the, the captain and uh, who, who helped uh, build the church and move the bell and the, the bells had a history because the, the first bell they put in the church uh, broke. Didn't, it, 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 it had to go back to the foundry. And then they got a replacement, but it wasn't all that good. But the, one of the things you have to remember is the, the, the family of the, Ar the arms family, which is a very old family in Deerfield, and there were a number of brothers, and they built the largest pocketbook shop they were pretty well landed and pretty well off. Well, these are the folks that walked out of the original congregation church and established the monument church. Oh. So they bought a good brass. Oh, oh wow, there's your skull. Look at that. Wow, wow, that is amazing. So they brought a, they bought a better brass bell and hung it in the monument church. Well, one of the agreements when the when churches finally got back together again is that the church, the congregational church today, as it exists today, got that monument church bell. Yeah. So they replaced it. So anyway, there's there's lots of these little there's lots of these little stories. Yeah. So Pete, I'm wondering um, before the students head out, um, as part of the wrap up of, of their project, is if they could give us maybe a little um, bio of each of them that are working on this and maybe to get a photo because at an, some time it would be really good to acknowledge their efforts in part of this project. Yeah, I don't see why that couldn't be done. I mean, one of maybe one of the other things that we could do is just get FCAT to get them together on a conference, conference call like this and, and photograph a little three to five been a discussion about how they went about doing it or what they learned. Mm -hmm. I just think, you know, before they disappear for the summer or graduate, um, yeah. you know, to be able to properly capture who's assisting us and yeah. however we include it and wherever, it just would be good to have. Yeah, I have the information already. No, no, no. I'm talking about a bio for each yeah, of them. That's what I, have. I, I asked oh. each one of them to write a bio. Oh, good, good. Because we wanted to know where they were coming from. Okay, great. Thinking wise. Excellent, uh, good. But it, I think uh, it, I'm I'm not sure if we'll be well enough to have a a group picture or something or other. But you you can ask them for a headshot, and I can post it on the website underneath their contact information for the info. Because that's something that we're all going to have to do too. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. So. I have to get a haircut. <laughs> before we forget, we though, I want to. Before we forget, I just want to go back to Rocky's um, skull in the yes. in this wall. The, you know, the, it would be kind of neat if on the web page we had individual stories that you know what it, it was something unique about your house that showed up or. You know, did you have a neat, unique story? And I mean, this is where you could say, you know, doing some renovation work, we found the skull in my house. And that's, this, that's amazing. You no know, in there. And I mean, you know, I mean, it's just kind of a really cool thing. Yeah. And, and where else would you post this? I mean, this is not, I mean, but how interesting. So at least it's not a body. Yes. <laughs> a favorite pet or something. You know? that was riding them. <laughs> That's crazy. What year I, was that um, put in there? Do you know? What? What year was it put in the house? 1849. Wow. April, April 29th, 1849. That was wow. so cool. 
This is yep. really so. I mean, but, but where else would you put this information? So if we had some place on the web page for just interesting anecdotes from you yep. know people's house, yeah. or, you if know, you their own. Up, if you write up a summary, Rocky, I can uh, post it on the website once we're up and running. Okay, sure. Yeah, and send a picture with you and your skull. <laughs> I want to apologize. Uh, I might disappear any minute. My battery is almost empty. That's so, okay. Our meeting's about we're, to wrap just, up anyways. We're just about to yeah. wrap up. That okay. was the last. Uh, and, so, and if I do disappear, I'll see you next month. Okay. okay. Thanks, Thanks for joining us. Um, yes. So that's the end of, I guess that's the end of my report. Most of it's going to be, I'll, I'll, you've got it in paper form. Uh, so have a look at that. We'll We'll and I'll pass it on. To, yeah, I'll get it out to everybody. And the 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 the, the one for the church, Carolyn. Can can you get that out to the select board? Yes, and, I'm gonna I'm gonna get it out to the building committee. Thank you very much. Yep. And if you might suggest to the building committee that they send it to their consultant. Yes, actually, that's a good idea. I'll I'll put that down. Um. Okay, uh, anybody else have any other business? We're, we're through with the agenda. I think it was just to talk about what report we're supposed to create. Oh, sorry, so yes, town report. The town thing, because um, yeah. when do they need it for printing? Because um, I think we're, you know, we can, we can each create a segment of it, but we would need to have a special meeting to vote on it that it's okay whatever content we put in, because we can't do that via email um, for the open meeting law. Um, I think it's okay if, if, if everyone was sent to the chair, the chair can submit it. Do we have a chair? Peter's chair. I'm sort of acting as interim chair. And I can, I, I'll act as an interim chair for that piece if you like. Good. <laughs> I just I think if we I think if you if we wrote and we sent it to Peter, then Peter can submit it um, as the chair. Great. I, I have the deadline date somewhere um, because I asked what the deadline was. Um, oh. to, just Great. hang on. Uh, my, my computer crashed, so I switched over to my phone. Okay. And now I'm like not functioning very well. Um, um, because because uh, I can't see all of your faces, just one of you at a time, and now I can't see anybody. It's all right. You, you can research your stuff. We still hear you. Yeah, I, I mean, know. You're, you're, you're coming through loud and clear, Holly. Well, I could get to it quicker on my computer. Now I'm like thumbing through on my iPhone, and it's more <laughs> of a nuisance. Who who sent us the message? Pat Cole. Cole. That's what I saw. And I... I, I, I tried to search for her and oh here it is okay um still missing as of today do you plan to submit and then i said is there a date she said um it's not required but usually groups submit something um she did not tell me the date well, I can tell you I haven't done my Selectman's report yet. So um, and then we're good. <laughs> yeah, don't worry. I mean, I, Pat sent me like four emails already. So I, I know it's the, we have a little bit of extra time this year because the um, town meeting is pushed off till June 12th. It's normally the fourth um, uh, Monday of April, but we so put it off. 12th? It's yeah. June 12th, yes. Okay. And so um, we have a little bit of extra time. And I mean, I have not been able to sit down and write a report on um, this year. This year has been from a nightmare. The year so, from hell. Yeah. Yes. Ah. So um, okay. COVID, I guess that's the big, big title, COVID. So um really every activity has been COVID related and, and we're, so we're all running behind. So you, you still have a week or two minimum. 
Okay. Um, just just let Pat know that you're going to submit something so she can hold, put a placeholder, though. Do you want me to do that, Pete, just to follow up? Yeah, you want to do that? Yep. I'll okay. let her know, and I'll just CC you. And okay. It's going to come from you. Yep. Okay. Uh, just curious, Pete, do you want me to just um, update and make the uh, event calendar pretty, or do you want me to just write about what we did with it? So that way it's just a written piece and it's not I, like a whole separate page. Yeah, I think before committing ourselves to the events calendar, we I'd rather I'd like to flesh it out more. Yeah. You know, no problem. As we, so as we go about, on. But I, I, think about creating perfect, it. I think it's perfectly a prop a proper or whatever the word is to say we're creating this. Yeah. You know, we're doing what I would I think the major things that have occurred this year um we should try and capture and i and i think part of it is develop is developing the friends of deerfield and why we why we did that and so i think that's an important thing well that's separate yeah. from the town stuff so you we could insert there um that we we are that the steering committee is working with the friends of deerfield well, I think even before that, we, as we had, I think we, we started out not intending to create a separate body that would do the fundraising, right. but the, the, the steering committee was informed by the town that we were going to run into problems if, if we, we tried to pursue our independent fundraising. So that led to the formation of the Friends of Deerfield. You won't have to say anything more than that. Okay. But it gives recognition to the fact that Friends of Deerfield are going to be the fundraisers. And that now we've moved on from there. We've uh, developing a calendar. A calendar. Uh, we're yep. talking about various events. I'll write something up on the historic, what we've done with the historic subcommittee. Okay. Um, if people would like to just sort of summarize the various um, kind of major events that, that we're anticipating. Maybe maybe that could be part of that calendar part of it. Included, we're, we're developing this calendar and included on the calendar are such items as... Yeah, I can summarize what the topics are so that way we're not, you know, yeah. Yeah. we're not tying it up to being a specific date obviously the parade is set but you know um so i don't know if you want to put that in there because it is such a big event yeah no, i think any of the big events that we've identified and we've all agreed to i think should be in there it lets people know what's going to happen but i think one of the things that we can do in this uh report in the town is to indicate that the final success of this whole thing is going to be on enough townspeople participating yeah. in the yeah. subcommittees to pull it yeah. off. Yeah. And, and, and then we could plan on next year in the town report actually publishing the calendar because next year we'll be on the correct schedule. Right, so right. the town report would be coming right. out in April, which would be giving us the whole um, calendar year of- Well, it would give us six months before anything would be starting right yeah. plus plus it would also by solidifying it by that time frame it would give the potential fundraiser of the calendar for 2023 um, right. the boost that that needs to exactly that's good yep because what yeah, I'm thinking ahead to the town meeting next year for when it happens, if it's usually at the beginning of June, we could have that calendar solidified and have the Friends of Deerfield, you know, selling the calendars potentially at the town meeting. So that way it gets buy-in too. Next year will be the fourth Monday of April again, I'm sure. Okay. Yeah. We'll be back on time. That's why I'm saying we could plan next year for having the calendar events and then yep. the actual calendar be selling the calendar in that time frame, after. Perfect. That'll yeah. really tie in nicely.
Is there anything else? I, I, I mean, I don't think we need to make this thing long and belabored. I think that. Uh, oh no, uh, no, you don't need to. But you know, I think we it'd need be a good to, opportunity. Yeah, I mean, I think the if if to tell people, look, we've got a broad range of events that we've identified and and whatever. But I think that final message of we need your help, folks, because this ain't gonna happen without it. Well, this yeah. again is another opportunity to reach out to people and. Um, yeah. Yeah. And, the, and the people that are going to town meeting and are picking up the town report are somewhat engaged already. So, yeah. you know, there's a more likelihood this is as a volunteer pool, this is a more viable volunteer yeah. pool. Yeah, for sure. Jennifer, yeah. would, would our web address be available uh, for Pete to include? Uh, yeah, I think it already exists, or I have it, um, I believe it's deerfield350f.org, but I've got to double check, um, because as long as it's, as long as we have it active by the time this goes to, goes out in June, which we should, we should have it active before June 12th, that's, you said, yeah, when the that's meeting. why I was just thinking if we knew what the address was. Yeah, I'll, I'll send that over in the blurbage. Yeah, I'll send nope. it over in my segment. And then we'll also have our social media out there too, right? Yep. yep. Excellent. Great. Good, good. Excuse me. Sorry. Luna gets me up early. Oh, Carolyn almost dozed off. <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. It's quite just, all right. <laughs> it starts out. <laughs> I that's, start that's out so darn early and all I'm doing is going to meetings and you're sitting here and it's like all of a sudden it's so yeah, quiet bro. and uh, I'm not, not too close enough tonight. I'd slip you a mint julep and let you really enjoy it <laughs> <laughs> no I still have a few phone calls to return that people are bummed that they didn't get signed up so oh god well if everyone's ready I'm going to make a motion that we adjourn this evening all right uh, thank you yep Thank you, everybody. Hey, it was nice to see you today, and Carolyn, you as well. Yeah. Good to see okay. you all. We're Take adjourned. Care.